seniors that are in the starting five for Coach Crenshaw today. A fourth in Zach Gunn, unfortunately, two years in the program, but unable to play due to injury after transferring from Ball State. Those players have been recognized. Now it's simply time to play. Austin jumps at center against Adrian Nelson. IUPUI wins the tap. We are ready for the 31st and final regular season game for each of these two teams. We thank you for joining us on ESPN+. Plus. Marlon Taylor scored the first bucket in the last game, gets that one as well. Taylor is averaging two points per game. Young man that played for the Jaguars three years ago, then did not play the last two seasons. Back on the roster and now his fourth start of the year. Youngstown State put up 105 when these two teams played back in January and off to a good start again. That's Malik Green. He is a transfer from Canisius. He was the sixth man of the year in the Metro Atlantic Athletic Conference a year ago. It's about as large of a lineup as you'll see IUPUI play. Counter created some space, a little chicken wing to get free, and Counter sticks it from 15 feet. So both teams off to a solid offensive start. Catch and shoot from 17 is pure for Adrian Nelson. The transfer from Northern Kentucky, 13 points and 10 rebounds a game. Nelson shooting 50% from the floor. We reference the fact that Youngstown State is eighth in Division I in scoring 83 points a game. Their other shooting numbers are just as impressive. 49% from the floor, that's 10th in Division I. 78% from the line, that's 12th. Counter from 22. First missed shot of the game. Ball touched last by IUPUI. Here's McBride. McBride, a transfer from Eastern Michigan. We'll update you on the other games taking place in the league tonight. And the impact on the league chase off the backboard does not go. Carrasco may have altered the shot. Taylor poked away, but able to track it down. And Taylor draws the blocking foul. Now being it's Brandon Rush. He is a transfer from Fairleigh Dickinson University. Second leading scorer at 14 points a game and a 39% three-point shooter. Every offensive stat is impressive for the Penguins. The 22 wins for Youngstown State already their high water mark in their Division I history. Brady, a deep three, does not go. And the rebound controlled rather easily by Adrian Nelson. Penguins off of the races again. A little contact. We play through. That's kind of gone both ways. Not only a jump ball, the arrow keeps it here to the Penguins of Youngstown State. The two IUPUI wins in the series, both have come at the Beagley Center in Youngstown. The last one came during the COVID shortened year of 2021. Blocking foul on Chris Austin. Austin was hampered by foul trouble in IUPUI's victory against Robert Morris on Thursday night. You don't want to have kind of that same situation present itself here this evening from the IUPUI perspective. Shot clock reset to 20 after the foul on Austin. Here's Cohill. Cohill for three, not that time. And the rebound controlled by Carrasco with not much of an effort. Cohill, that's a rare miss. He's a 47% three-point shooter. Brady hangs in the air and gets it off the window. The Indianapolis native from Cathedral High School his high school team was in the building to watch him on Thursday night. Brady gets the bucket. Three different Jaguars have scored. They enjoy an early 6-4 lead. Three in the corner, Cohill. Missed that one, too. So a sluggish start for the Penguins. Two of six from the floor and 0 of two from three-point range. So now UPUI is playing much better basketball than when the Penguins saw them back on January the 7th. Carrasco was in a tough spot. 
dives for it. Somehow that ball ends up in Marlon Taylor's hands. Shot clock at seven. Taylor in a tough spot. Just throw, tries to throw it off the Youngstown State player and ends up turning it over. First IUPUI giveaway. Green down the lane. Got it to go. Malik Green. He's got four. We're tied at six. Green, 14 points a game. Third best score on this Youngstown State squad. Majority of their points, and that's not a surprise, but a significant percentage of their points come from their starting five. No player off the bench averages more than four and a half a game for the Penguins. Shot clock at seven. Counter from 23. Yes, sir. Three points or numbers aren't great for counter or IUPUI, but they seemingly have gotten better as the season has gone along. First three for either side tonight, and Brady beats, gives the push, will offer assistance to Green. Don't think that was intended to be as vicious as it looked. Let's hope that Green is all right. Dunkstown will check on him when we come back. Penguins trail by three on ESPN+. Plus. Again, Greg Regstraw with you. Normally joined by Bob Lovell, but it is a very busy sports day here in Indianapolis today. Literally across the hallway from this game, the Indiana Boys Swimming and Diving State Championships took place. The Indiana Girls Basketball State Finals taking place just down the street at Gamebridge Fieldhouse as a shot is taken by Nelson and missed, and Taylor gets the rebound. Pacers are next on the road tonight, and oh yeah, IU and Purdue play each other this evening too. So, lots happening on the sports calendar, so you get me flying solo tonight. Carrasco, that's a tough shot, and that's a little senior night kiss right there for Jonah Carrasco. It's about as long as you'll see his range go. He had a big jump hook late against Robert Morris on Thursday, and the grad student from Wichita, Kansas, got that to go. Jaguars enjoying a five-point lead. Carrasco went straight up, didn't get called for the foul. Fantastic finish by Cohill through him. Cohill's first bucket, 11-8. DJ Jackson just checked in. DJ Jackson gets downhill, which is what the reigning freshman of the week does best for IUPUI. The native of Mississauga, Ontario. He had 24 and 12 on Thursday. He gets the first bench points of the game for IUPUI. He is in for Chris Austin. Substitution. John Loveless is in there now for Youngstown State. 6 7 freshman. Shot clock at 8. Cohill fires in the lane. Shot blocked. Now, nope, they're going to say no. Simply out of bounds to IUPUI. Ball hit the baseline. Inside official looked to the wing and said, Hey, was that touched? He said, No. Ball goes to IUPUI. Good crowd on hand this evening. Obviously, in this facility, which now seats about 1,200, doesn't take much to make a good crowd. But good to see some butts in seats for this home finale. And IUPUI knows they are on the road for the conference tournament path. Jackson got bumped, wave off the shot, foul on the floor. That'll be against Bryce McBride. Let's take a look. Jackson lobbying for the and one. And you can make a case for him potentially getting that. He took a step after the contact. One of those 50 50 calls, but again, immediately the official said nope. No continuation there. Counter. Got it in just in time. And let's reference the fact the Youngstown State seeding ramifications frankly have far more importance than what IUPUI does, but they can bump up a spot. Green Bay lost at home to Purdue-Fort Wayne today. So Green Bay is finished with their league record at 2-18. and 18. So if IUPUI is able to spring the upset tonight, they would bump up to the number 10 seed. They know they are on the road Tuesday. Whom they are playing is still up for debate. And there is one league game that starts after this one. That is Cleveland State at Milwaukee and again. That could have impacts on both teams in terms of a regular season championship. Counter. Shot clock at six. The fade away by counters and air ball. And Brady caught it, but then stepped out of bounds. It'll be Youngstown State ball. So this is the only game going on in the league right now. 
Three other games have gone final across the league today. Wright State beat Detroit Mercy 82-71. Northern Kentucky wins at Oakland 78-69. And the aforementioned Purdue Fort Wayne winning against Green Bay. So of note, the three games played so far have all been won by the road team. That would bode well for Youngstown State. Other thing you want to note from that, too, is that for Detroit Mercy, Antoine Davis scored 34. So he will enter the conference tournament 63 points shy of Pete Maravich's all-time NCAA scoring record. Green will fire up a wing three. That does not go. Austin back in there, but Loveless tracks down the loose ball. Possession reset for Youngstown. Now Nelson, baseline corner three. Yes, sir. First made triple by Youngstown State. And it's 13 to 11. So Youngstown State connects. They're now one of four from three-point range. John Agbuda in for IUPUI. Agbuda has played starters minutes, but come off the bench for most of the season. Counter on the flyby, and that's too easy from the Youngstown State perspective. Counter's got seven. And again, Youngstown State, not a great defensive team. They are spectacular from a stat standpoint on offense. They're allowing 73 a game. Getting downhill, looking to finish block shot. And Buda got that cleanly. Then Jackson lost it. No block this time. Give the dunk to Brandon Rush. So Rush gets his first bucket. Turnover by IUPUI, their second of the game. Jags the ball in a two-point lead. Counter looking for Austin. Austin had a double-double against the Penguins back in early January. Jackson in the lane, does not go. By the way, Garrett Covington is in there. And he has the ball now. Just checked in, fires, and the former Carmel Greyhound gets the triple. Garrett spent his last semester of his senior year at Carmel High School. Was a move in from the Atlanta area. He has been in the Youngstown State program for a while. A grad student and knocks that one down. He's a 38% three-point shooter. And it is a one-point lead for the visitors from Northeast Ohio. Taken away by Nelson. Nelson with a foot race with counter. Step through and score it. Seven consecutive points now for Youngstown State. Youngstown State 6-0, by the way. An advantage in terms of points off turnovers. Counter and an offensive foul. Wave off the three. But they're going to get Austin for a moving screen, which will be his second. So things are turning quickly in favor of the visitors of Youngstown State. After IUPUI had built a five-point lead, Youngstown State leads by a triple. Here on ESPN, tiebreaker with Austin in the number five position. If Youngstown State loses, then they are scoreboard watching that other game. Because there is a scenario where Milwaukee could leapfrog from fourth to first if Youngstown State loses this game. Wing three, no, rebound counter. So seven straight points by the Penguins. Youngstown State two of six from this game from three-point range to get things started. Carrasco back in with Austin sitting with two fouls. Counter likes his matchup without a screen. Jackson in the corner for three. Not that time. Egg Buddha. Good rebound. Made one mistake. Lost on the dribble. But finds Jackson who scores. Literally from the seat of his pants. Give Egg Buddha the assist. Jackson's got four. Nelson is going to go to work. Carrasco goes flying, but again, frankly, in both directions, that contact from the offensive player has been allowed in tonight's game. Nelson's got nine. He was quite the player at Northern Kentucky, and he has been equally as good at Youngstown State. 
Jackson in the lane. Not that time. And it'll be off the hands of Jonah Carrasco. Jaguars off to a solid shooting start for head coach Matt Crenshaw on your screen. Jags are 8 of 14 from the floor to get things started. Matt Crenshaw's team is clearly making progress as the season goes along. I'm sure that Matt had hoped to have more wins than five at this point, but this team is light years than they were last year. Carrasco tried to draw the clock. No whistle going in either direction, and Nelson misses the bunny. Brady, the floater from 15. That does not go. And the loose ball, Loveless touched it last. Out of bounds to IUPUI. So 20 on the 30 for the Jaguars. Cohill will take a bet, take a seat on the Youngstown State bench. So counter misses from the top of the key. Covington's made one. Now he's made two. It's a happy homecoming for the former Carmel Greyhound. That pause is because the net was stuck on the rim. Second made three again. Doesn't shoot that many. When he does, he's effective. Brady will have a seat. Penguins enjoy their largest lead of the game at 23-17. Armand Girard in the game, the freshman from Mount Vernon for IUPUI. Again, Jackson off the window, couldn't get it to go. Green and Jackson both late to get up. At the other end, slipping through is Rush, and Rush has four. And all of a sudden, Penguins now enjoying an eight-point advantage. Jaguars led 15 to 11. So make it a 14 to 2 run with these last few minutes by Youngstown State. Shot clock at 7. Cooper DeWitt in there for the first time. Carrasco at 4. Ball's got to go up. Counter's got a good look. And buries it. Second made 3 by Jalen Counter. Again, he's become more of a proficient three point shooter as the year has gone along. He's got both three point makes for IUPUI tonight. Green step through and score. Pretty move. Malik Green with six and a timeout taken by Matt Crenshaw. A 30 that will turn into a full. Youngstown State has found their offensive rhythm. They've had it all year long. They lead by seven on ESPN playing on Tuesday. Teams four and five. We'll know they are playing each other on Thursday. And then seeds one, two, three away to see what happens on Tuesday night. In terms of whom they'd be playing, they know they'll be playing at home. Youngstown knows they're going to host a game on Thursday. Jags know they're on the road on Tuesday. After that, it is all to be determined. Four out, one in here for IUPUI. Carrasco at six. He'll go to work with a jump hook. And one. Well, Jonah is the longest tenured member of the IUPUI program. This is his third year. He was brought under former interim head coach Byron Rim. He's been through some good times and, frankly, some bad times as well. He is playing well down the stretch, kind of shakes his head, saying, why well, haven't I done this more often? Now, in the senior day festivities that did not make it to ESPN+, Plus, the most important stat for Jonah is his GPA in Indianapolis is north of 3.8. Solid young man that working on his master's in organizational leadership. And for as well as he has played the last couple of games, he will not want to remember that effort from the free throw line. Five-point game. Little three-quarter court pickup here by IUPUI. They played a bit more 2-2-1 pressure as of late. That was designed more to slow down Youngstown more than anything else. Green got loose, and Green throws it down. Malik Green with eight. And it was a 30-point laugher when Youngstown State beat IUPUI nearly two months ago. 
Ahmad Girard is in. In fact, both Girard twins are in. Ahmad number five. Armand number 12. Jackson bounces off a defender and gets it to go. And Jackson continuing his torrid pace as of late. He's got six all the way down. Foul is called and Rush will shoot the first two free throws of the game for Youngstown State. And we referenced the stat earlier. Let's bring it up here again. Basically, the free throw line's been like free money for Youngstown State in this season. 78% from the line. 12th best in the nation. Broadcaster Jinx is in full effect. That foul did go against Cooper DeWitt for IUPUI. His first team fourth. Rush connects from the line. So 30-24. Simple half-court man here by the Penguins. As if Carrasco goes to work again. He does. The turn, the jump shot. Go to Carrasco is having a senior night to remember. He averages three. He's got six. Jonah had four on Thursday. That's about getting some stops for IUPUI. That's a stop. Even if Green got a great look, basket did not go in. Both teams shooting north of 56% at this stage of the game. By the way, Carrasco's season high is seven. His career high is 13 against non-Division I competition last year. Gerard misses. Rebound rush. Flying down the floor. Blocked. Saved. But goes right to Green. Who scores it? Green with 10. Counter getting a breather currently for IUPUI. So is Vincent Brady. It's rare that both those two guys are seeing time on the sidelines together. Tough entry pass. Good catch by Carrasco. Give it to him. He's got a new season high. And another chance for an and one. And he tugs on his jersey. Young man, when they're falling like that, you find more oxygen. Don't leave the game. Carrasco draws the foul against Rush. It'll be his second. Marlon Taylor and Vincent Brady were set to check in. I'm not sure Taylor might be coming in for Carrasco. He's in the game already. So we have, and Austin's got two fouls. So perhaps Egbuda might come in and give Carrasco a bit of a spell. Carrasco averaging 17 and a half minutes a game. Much better that time in the free throw line. So Jonah will check out. And again, it is Egbuda that comes in. And you're seeing the Hug and a handshake from Matt Crenshaw. Maybe Jonah comes back in at the next media timeout. Nelson, too easy. Nelson 11. And again, for the sterling shooting stats that Young Tatsina has had all year. It's the post guys that have gotten the work done today. Nelson and Green have 21 of the Penguin 34. And frankly, both teams are simply trading baskets right now. Shot clock at nine. The feed to Egbuda. The bobble by Egbuda, but it got tangled up in the feet of Loveless. And that'll bring us to a media timeout. Again, both teams are knocking it down from all across the building. Right now, the Penguins lead by five as you're watching Horizon League Basketball. As well as baseball. And frankly, those two sports. Youngstown State fared very well in both of those last spring when I was on the call of those for ESPN+. Plus. Inbounds to Jalen Counter who checks back in. Carrasco remains on the bench because the shot clock was short. Brady had to let that one fire. Good hustle by Agbuda to keep it alive, but Brady's push shot missed, and 
Brady having kind of a rare sluggish night from the field. He is one of his first five. Trailer three by Nelson. Great rebound by Loveless. Missed it, but he's fine. This has not been a game with a great amount of offensive rebounds going either direction just because neither team has missed that much. But Loveless got that one and draws the foul. Even for a team that scores a lot in Youngstown State, that was a rapid shot that was taken by Nelson. Loveless goes to the line where he is a 68% free throw shooter. And again, on this team, where six of the top seven scores for Youngstown are seniors or grad students. Loveless is the exception. Freshman from Wisconsin. Makes them both. His first two points, six different Penguins have scored. Garrett Covington comes back in. Little full court pickup here by the Penguins. And frankly, this is the neighborhood this game has lived in for a while. Got a five to seven points. Carrasco back in for IUPUI. He of the season high nine already for the Jaguars. Counter. Couldn't beat Loveless to the lane. Entry pass tipped. Carrasco tracks it down. Nice move by Cowan. Lays it up and in. Give the assist to Jonah Carrasco. Those two have combined for 21 of the IUPUI 31. You say Counter's name with somebody like that. You're like, that makes sense. You throw Carrasco in there. A little bit different from the norm for IUPUI. Extra pass. Loveless three over Marlon Taylor. No. Rebound. Taylor snares it. After Green tipped it. Good look ahead pass counter counter went right at Cohill to draw the foul and Cohill you can tell by his reaction didn't agree with the call kind of put it down like a hot potato ran away before he said something different I respect the discretion of Cohill that time and didn't like the call and just put it down and walked away quickly veteran player and for those in the Youngstown State perspective, you might say the ball doesn't lie as Counter misses the free throw. Jalen on the season, an 81% free throw shooter. Jaguars is a team 70% from the line. And kind of like all their offensive numbers, gotten much better as the season has gone along. Down to a four-point game now. Nelson feels he has a mismatch on Brady. And I think they're going to call Nelson with the arm bar and posting up, I think. Jared Calhoun asking for a clarification and not offering much way of argument on that call. So turnover against Youngstown State. That is their first of the half. Covington went for the steal. Didn't get it which left Jackson over the lane. And Jackson has not been missing those as of late. And it's down to a two-point game. IUPUI last had the lead at 15-13. Jaguar students and fans starting to make the noise here against the top team in the league. Loveless a bobble. Back-to-back -back turnovers by the Penguins. Here comes IUPUI. Taylor! That's a goaltender. It should have been. I thought it should have been. I was off the backboard. Officials say no. Carrasco at the other end, given the rule of verticality. Loveless picked it up, doesn't get the put back, and it's a foul. Now, again, I thought that was picked off the backboard on the effort by Taylor. Officials clearly deem that it got pinned to the backboard. Let's take a look. Yeah, I thought that he, I thought that Green was fine, but that Loveless clearly got it after it touched the backboard. Thought that was a miss. But frankly, my opinion of the subject does not matter. The three gentlemen that are paid to officiate this game, Loveless connects from the free throw line. That could have tied the game at 36. Said Youngstown State to the free throw to make it a two possession game.
90 seconds to go. We're in this entertaining first half. Again, it's Jackson. Again, they will wave off the contacts. Second time that Jackson's thought he's had a bucket, but the official says no. Green will be called for the foul. Sixteen fouls, no free throws just yet. Next one will send IUPU out of the bonus. Brady has a lane. And that'll be a blocking foul on Cohill. So Cohill picks up his second, and Brady goes to the free throw line to shoot two. And this has been a limited free throw game. Youngstown five of six, IUPUI two of four. Good help by Green, but contact by Cohill leads to free throws. So Cohill two, rush two for Youngstown, and Brady doesn't get the roll to go. He was moving that side as that ball was on its way to the rim. And misses that one. Right now the difference in this game, free throws. Jaguars trail by four, and they missed four at the line. Green. And a foul call. So Carrasco whistled for the foul. Green on the season, 61% from the line. Reference the fact that he played two years at Canisius. Before that, had spent time at Moorhead State. Moorhead State won the OVC this past year. Fresh face in for the Penguins of Youngstown State. As Green misses that, Taylor with a good rebound. So both teams leave points at the line their last time down the floor. Shamar Rathamaze in for Youngstown. Counter fouled on the drive. And after this has been a limited foul game early, all of a sudden fouls are collecting quickly. And counter the line where he is one of two. In the other game that impacts this one, Cleveland State of Milwaukee tips at the top of the hour as counter gets it to go. Counter with 14. He had 17 on Thursday in the IUPUI victory against Robert Lawrence. And counter gets the roll. So 15 in the first half for Jalen Counter. Already at his average on a per game basis. A little pressure by IUPUI and Nelson throws it away. That was frankly an opportunity there. Youngstown State couldn't cash it in. And it has been a limited turnover game. Four against IUPUI. That is the third. They've all come kind of towards the back end of the half for Youngstown State. So again, a chance to tie or take the lead for the Jaguars. IUPUI has already taken their use it or lose it. First half 30. Armand Girard in for IUPUI. Shot clock at 11. Carrasco catches, but 18 feet from the rim. Basket cut by Girard. Got bumped by Covington and get it to him. That young man that had a chance for a four-point play twice on Thursday. He loves the contact. Gerard got to go, and we're tied at 38. So Gerard gets his first bucket of the game. That foul on Covington. And a chance for IUPUI to reclaim the lead. Gerard. 
got the friendly bounce. We'll see if Youngstown's able elects to take a 30-second timeout here. Or simply take their chances in a full court scenario. Largest lead for the Penguins was eight at 25-17. Penguins will play it out. No timeout taken. Loveless looking to drive. Step through. Blocked by Carrasco. Fight for the loose ball. And IUPUI will take a one point lead at halftime. I flex two young men after that block. And a season high nine points for senior Joe Carrasco. IUPUI trying to spring the up. Bryce McBride on your screen. Did not have a point in the first half. The senior transfer from Eastern Michigan. The usual starting five instead of the senior laden group out there for IUPUI. Taylor, Counter, Jackson, Vincent Brady, Chris Austin. Counter wants the ball screen from Austin. Slips it to him. Brady will line it up from 21 and miss everything. And two of the usual suspects in Brady and Austin. Both have been a bit off in their game tonight. Austin played just seven minutes and didn't attempt a shot. Brady is now one of six. Yet, Jaguars still lead. That's an encouraging sign. Green scores. Had a mismatch being guarded by DJ Jackson. Malik Green's got a dozen. And Youngstown State back in front. Austin looks to go to work. Shot clock and a dozen. Counter contested jump shot. Got it. Again, this IUPUI team, they're built a little funkily. Not a great three point shooting team, but Counter and Jackson are phenomenal mid range, kind of old school bucket getters. That's an example right there from Counter as he's got 17. Stuck in the lane, Jaguars yelling three, Green clears in time. McBride will fire a line drive three, spins in and out, and counter with the defensive glass. Four out, one in for IUPUI. Taylor flashes high post. Taylor on the drive, let his man fly by, step through and score. Well done, Marlon Taylor. It's his second bucket of the game. And the Jaguar lead is three. Quickly, Green goes right at Taylor, and Taylor was trying to pull the chair, but had a little arm there as he went for that steal. So Marlon Taylor with the foul. His first foul. For IUPUI, Austin has two. For Youngstown State, Cohill and Rush have two. Bryce McBride has two fouls as well. And we must... Apparently going to have a replay of that, I assume, is the reason why players are heading to the benches. So in the games at the Indiana Farmers Coliseum, frankly, the replay monitor comes directly to us. However, in the games at the Jungle, that is separate from our broadcast location. So the replay coordinator will communicate back to our Tupelo Raycom crew. And we'll watch the, they'll put seven seconds back on the clock and now we're back to action. So 23 on the shot clock here for the Penguins. And that would be a bit of a miscommunication by IUPUI because no player, let alone their leading score tonight in green should be that open on a basic inbounds play. Green's got 14, 43, 42. No player should be that open on a basic hits bounce play either. Austin left by his lonesome, and as he is at all season long, just jams it home. Chris is shooting 68% from the floor. Now, he does not have enough field goal attempts to qualify to be on the NCAA leaders. If he did, he'd be fifth in the nation. Three-point lead for IUPUI. McBride up and under. Austin made him change his mind. And Youngstown State turns it over. Counter on the bounce. Off the window. No. Back to the loose ball. Green comes out of there with it. 
Penguins off the race is the lead for Nelson. Dam jams at home. Nelson's got 13. And again, there's been contact going both ways tonight. Officials have let them play. That's been a consistent whistle or lack thereof. And it's back to a one-point game with 17 minutes left to play. Counter slips to Austin. Austin gets downhill, and his shot is good. The native of Crawley, Louisiana, didn't score in the first half. He's got back-to-back -back buckets. Cohill. Nelson. Taylor, and one. Again, Cohill, to his credit, normally their leading scorer. He's been more of a facilitator tonight because Nelson and Green have had an advantage in the low block. Cohill averaging 18 points a game, but does have a team-high five assists a contest. Taylor, his second foul. And Nelson, the free throw line for the first time tonight. Nelson, a 74% free throw shooter. And connects. We're tied at 47. And Buddha in there for IUPUI. Junior from the Bronx did not score in limited minutes at half number one. Counter awaits the ball screen from Austin. Shot clock at seven. Counter creates some space. Late decision to slip it to Egbuda, who misses but draws the foul on Nelson. Not only was that a great feed by Counter, but you understood if Egbuda was not looking and thinking about a rebound. Worked out for the Jaguars. They'll have free throws when we come back. Tied at 47. It's always out there. The horizon. Clearing in the contest. John Agbuda from the free throw line where he has a 71% free throw shooter. Jared Calhoun, he's got kind of program in hand in his right hand. What a job he has done in six years at Youngstown State. And this is just their second 20-win season at the Division I level. It's going to be their fourth consecutive winning season for Youngstown State. As Agbuda gets the friendly bounce in the home practice gym, but not the usual arena for IUPUI. Two-point lead for the Jaguars. Rush for three to take the lead, got it. Brandon Rush, 39% three-point shooter. His first three-point make of the game, fourth in total for the Penguins, and they seesaw back in front by a point. Jackson content to take some time. Once the screen from Egbuda now picks it up. And that was, well, rather ugly by IUPUI. And turnovers have been a problem for them all season long. And I think Matt Crenshaw's face sums up my feelings about that possession. IUPUI averaging 16 turnovers a game. That's not been the case today. It's been five. I think that's off. Nope. Not if I went off a rush's leg. It wasn't. Touch last by IUPUI. Plenty of time on the 30 here for the Penguins. And again, just a simple dive play, and Nelson beats his man of the ball. 18 for Nelson. Points coming a bit too easy off of those underneath out-of-bounds plays from the IUPUI perspective. Tipped by Green out-of-bounds to IUPUI. If you're just joining us, if Youngstown State wins, they will claim their first league championship in men's basketball since making the move from Division II in 1980. Played briefly in the OVC. Played for many years in what was then the Mid-Continent Conference. Now the Summit League. They have spent 22 years in the Horizon League. Two. One on the shot clock. Jackson gets it up. Doesn't hit the rim, I don't think. Nope. 
Shot clock violation. And the last two possessions have seemed disjointed for IUPUI. And they frankly haven't had that the entirety of the day. Jonah Carrasco will check in next stoppage in play. He have the nine first half points for IUPUI. Cohill off the Nelson screen. Extra pass, McBride rushed from 22, got it. Rush has made threes in pretty short order. And Youngstown State enjoying a six point lead and a timeout gonna be taken by Matt Crenshaw. It'll be a 30 second timeout that will six. It is Youngstown's largest lead of the second half. Eight is their largest lead of the game. Youngstown won here a year ago in a game that was played during a rather significant snowstorm in Indianapolis. Far more fans on hand for this one. Armand Girard in for the first time. He had three the hard way for his lone points of the half. Counter, pulls and misses. Asked for contact, McBride did not get it. Chance for the Penguins to extend this lead. Penguins have scored the last eight. Ball poked away by Girard. Using that long wingspan of his. Not surprising, his twin brother has that too. Ed Buda on the jump stop. Up and over Nelson. Couldn't get it. Fight for the loose ball. Youngstown State comes out of there with it. Cohill rifles it up the floor. That's Rush. He got it. Rush with 13, and he has been largely responsible for this uptick in Youngstown State as their lead matches their largest of the night at eight. Counter throws it away. And now Rush. Beats Gerard down the floor, hammers it home. 10 point lead for Youngstown. And frankly, this is the type of explosion that Youngstown long. Again, they are the eighth scoring team in Division I basketball. So Jaguars really playing uphill for the first time tonight with 13 minutes left to play. Brady has been silent, largely for IUPUI tonight. Carrasco, great no-look pass. Brady had to double clutch, couldn't finish. And Nelson rips away the rebound. this point their last field goal over four minutes ago a dunk by Chris Austin Nelson throws it up and Gerard gonna be called for a foul it's gonna be a tough catch that time by Green because that ball was close to the rim but the foul bails him out as Armand Gerard is a few times on broadcast this year that as soon as the season is over, you want to take that necessary break. But the key for Armand and Ahmad Girard, get to the weight room. Deep three. 17. The lead is 13 for Youngstown State. Egg Buddha on the drive and scores it. His first field goal. Free throws over this half and that stops the bleeding temporarily for IUPUI. Green looking to go to work. Drop step and a beauty. Give it to him. Green with 19. Red Carrasco going up the lane. Went the other direction. Did Malik Green. Gerard, the hesitation dribble and the attack. Again, Nelson held his ground, no whistle given. McBride, the extra pass. Rush again. Rush, his third three of the half. And in seemingly the blink of an eye, it is a 16 point lead for Youngstown State. And if Youngstown wins in terms of the race for first, what happens between Northern Kentucky, or excuse me, Cleveland State and Milwaukee is irrelevant.
It's all about the Penguins. Gerard line drive three no. Egbuda put back yes, and he was fouled. So give Egbuda the bucket, but IUPUI needs some assistance because Youngstown State is rolling in the second half. They lead by 14 here inside the jungle at IUPUI. There are all kinds of products in this world, things that make life easier. That game is simply for second or potentially the third and four seeds in the league. Youngstown State knows if they win, they have to worry about nothing else, just the result of this one. So Egg Buddha, six points since halftime, make it seven for the junior from the Bronx. So Egg Buddha will have a seat. Carrasco back on the bench, Austin back in there. Cooper DeWitt in for IUPUI. Little three-quarter court pickup by the Jaguars. Cohill down the lane, ball poked away. Good hands by DeWitt. Shot clock at eight for the Penguins. Cooper, the junior out of Pasco, Washington. In the corner, McBride left alone, missed the three. Loveless, the offensive rebound, give it to him. Loveless, his first field goal, he made four free throws earlier. So he's got six, leading scorer off the bench. Nelson going to be called for the foul. So Nelson with two. Gerard receives the inbounds pass. Counter. Up and over McBride. Missed it, but, well, the reason that Austin was able to claim that rebound so easily, there was a whistle there because McBride got him on the arm. It'll be his third foul, and Jalen Counter will shoot two. So Counter has gotten to 17 points for a second time and has many games. but doesn't get the roll there. Counter has been in double figures more often than not in terms of league play. The season high is 27 twice. Makes that one as Jalen sitting on 18. Those 27 point games coming against Southern Indiana in non-conference action. And Purdue Fort Wayne and a loss in late January. 69-55. Cohill. Again, Jackson went flying. Hits the jumper. Tough shot. You're just tuning in saying, wasn't that a foul on Cohill? Well, maybe it was, but frankly, it's not been called in either direction. There was up there. Hence the reason. And I think there was also a shot clock malfunction because you see the shot clock is sitting on 30 and obviously that shouldn't be the case. We'll see if our replay services are needed to adjudicate it for that. And it clearly it wasn't. Just three seconds were taken off and we're moving on. Jackson in the lane. Jackson scored and is fouled. DJ Jackson with 10. We mentioned early in the season that DJ was a young man that at one point in time had recruiting looks from places like Seton Hall and George Washington. And he played at Montverde Academy, one of the top kind of after high school slash prep programs in the country. He is from Mississauga, Ontario. Missed about two months due to injury of the non-conference season. But he has continued to improve as the season has gone along. 
His free throw percentage up to 76%. After 23 on Thursday, he's got 11 today. But for IUPUI, it's about getting stops. There's a stop. Austin went up and high pointed that ball away from Nelson. Counter, lost it, got it back. Gerard fouled and won. And IUPUI will have an and one opportunity to get this back to a 10 point game. And in a remarkable step, the last four field goals over two games that Armand Gerard has scored, he has been fouled on that made basket. He had two threes like that in the game on Thursday. These are more of the conventional two-point variety with a chance to get the and one. Carrasco in, Cooper DeWitt out. Jags will go double post at least for a few minutes. And frankly, given how Green and Nelson have played, it's not a bad counter move there by Matt Crenshaw. Gerard, 63% from the line, improves his number with that shot. So the last six have been scored by IUPUI. Still work to do, down by 10 with nine minutes left to go. Cohill. Double team, Gerard got it. Gerard sizes it up, beat him to the spot and got it to go. Gerard with eight and a timeout call by Youngstown State. Eight straight points by IUPUI and they're right back in it. What was a 16 point lead has quickly dropped to eight. And again, the week talked about Vincent Brady being a freshman of the week. Well, Armand Gerard has done it twice this year. He had 22 against Cleveland State back on the last Sunday in January. He had 16 against Southern Indiana in mid December. The freshman from Mount Vernon. McBride gets it across the time stripe with a couple of seconds to spare. But the IUPUI crowd now has some life back in it. What was a 16 point lead is now eight. Shot clock at nine. Cohill goes to work on the freshman in Girard and scores over him and he is fouled. Again, Cohill from an offensive standpoint, from a number standpoint, has been quiet. He's made an impact in other ways in this game. For Cohill, it is his second year in the Youngstown program. Spent the previous three seasons playing at the University of Dayton. And Cohill will have a chance to bump that lead back to 11. For Armand Girard, it is his second foul of the game. Cohill, an 87% free throw shooter, as evidenced by Youngstown backing their entire team off the free throw line. And Austin didn't think that ball was going to him. And even in a game like tonight where seemingly turnovers have been greatly reduced, there are still some head-scratching moments. Sometimes now IUPUI does or does not take care of the basketball. To remember number eight for the Jaguars. So Youngstown State has weathered this little mini run by IUPUI. Loveless down the lane. Blocked by Carrasco, but Dean but Carrasco got some body on him. And Loveless will shoot two free throws when we come back from the media timeout. 74 63. Youngstown State inching closer to that elusive Horizon League title. They return to downtown Indianapolis after the Don Robic. Wanted to be a longtime assistant of John Calipari and Ron Hunter. By the way, that 2001 season would be the last losing season that Ron would have in this building as the IUPUI head coach. He'd coach here for 10 more years before. Moving on to Georgia State, and now at Tulane, and they're having their best season in many years. Greenway play tomorrow against Wichita State. Loveless makes them both. Loveless, a perfect six of six from the line tonight. He's got eight points. And that'll be a foul on Loveless holding Jalen Counter. And that should send IUPU out of the one plus the bonus, I believe. So counter who is four of six from the line tonight We'll look to add to that total
and got the friendly roll. Well, because of the cozy confines, this building has always been a shooter's gym. Left that one short, though, did counter. We've seen some pretty friendly bounces in tonight's game as well. Twelve point game of the basketball for the Penguins of Youngstown State. Cohill spins off the window too strong. And Austin had it, but then Nelson picks his pocket. And there was a delay in resetting of the shot clock. And it's taken care of now. It was a little late on the trigger, but it's taken care of. I think there was almost an instinctive flip back to 20. Then it went to 30. They're going to bump it down a couple of more seconds to 27. And given the pace at which Youngstown State plays, that should not be a problem. Nelson missed it. Good look that wouldn't go. Carrasco, good high low to Austin, out the window. In Austin, a silent first half. He's got six in the second half. And in typical Chris Austin fashion, he's taken three shots, he's made three shots. Ten-point game, six and a half to play. Cohill. Lane parts, that's goaltending, yep, no doubt. I thought there was a missed goaltending in the first half. There's no question about that one. Carrasco picked that one off the glass. Cohill's got nine. And as the game has gotten longer, and, and you see no doubt about that call. As the game has gotten longer, Cohill is having a bigger impact on it. That's not that big of a surprise. And if Youngstown State wins this one, number one seed guaranteed. And obviously they are dreaming of a first NCAA tournament berth, but they'd have a guaranteed NIT berth at worst. Austin lost it. Cohill on the reverse layup, got it again. Now he's got 11. And the four usual double digit per game scores for Youngstown State have all hit that trigger. 14 point game. Carrasco wants it on the wing. Counter wants a ball screen instead. Counter then lost the handle. And the mistakes are starting to pile up for IUPUI. Vincent Brady will come back in. Armand Girard will have a seat. The lead is 14 with five and a half to play. And Youngstown State put up triple digits when they played IUPUI earlier this season. Shot clock now in single digits. Cohill from 24. No. Carrasco the rebound. Youngstown State 7 of 16 from three-point range. They were toward on those early in the half. Jackson, yes. Gravity, his friend, DJ Jackson at 13. Down to 12, I think for IUPUI, your goal, get this to single digits by the final media timeout. One of the switch to get McBride on Austin. Green, jump hook, score it. Malik Green with 21. He paces the Youngstown State attack tonight. IUPUI can no longer afford to trade baskets. Loveless with the clearance foul of playing through Austin. And Chris Austin will go to the free throw line to shoot two. So John Loveless picks up his third. John Ekbuda returns for IUPUI. As Jonah Carrasco has his seat. Austin, a 59% free throw shooter. 
He'll take this ball to the basement on his form. Dips it all the way almost to the hardwood and got it to go. And Loveless, a little something extra on the block out that Chris Austin wasn't a fan of. So watch the contact between 10 and 23 after the ball is released here by Austin. No problem that time. Good rebound, though, by Egbuda. And then Loveless gives another immediate foul, his fourth. And that'll be, once again, free throws for IUPUI. Well, the Jaguars, frankly, have been okay from the line tonight. 13 of 20. Their average on the season, 70%. This is the final one plus the bonus for IUPUI. Two shots after this one. And counter connects, and he has got 20. So counter has cleared the 20-point barrier for a sixth time this season. Misses, but Austin tracks it down. Austin shot no. And Buda gets it and missed the dunk. And then Austin gives the foul. Well, IUPUI had a chance for a four-point trip. Foul in Austin, his third. Just the 16 foul, so no free throws come of that. But still a bit of a feeling of the air coming out of the balloon for IUPUI. And a chance to make that a 10-point game. Green through the double team, missed it, tip in, no, back for the loose ball, off of IUPUI. And that will lead us to our final media timeout. Youngstown State, 350 away, 351 away from a first league championship. Back in a moment. It's Lily. So there's a quick turnaround for those six teams that play on Tuesday. And IUPUI knows they will be one of them. We'll be playing at Wright State or Robert Morris. And of course, Robert Morris, a team they just beat on Thursday night. McBride didn't get it in in time. Absolutely not. Five second violation. A giveaway to IUPUI. Just the seventh Youngstown State turnover. They average only 11 a game, and given their level of senior guard play, that's not at all surprising. Has to be points every time down for IUPUI. Trailing by 12. Counter gets a sliver of space. Trying to throw it to Austin, but in turnovers again, it's kind of... The stat term regression to the mean after taking care of the basketball for a good chunk of this game. That turnover problem creeping in for IUPUI. Green with a mismatch, guarded by Brady. Immediate help leaves Cohill open, buries it. His first three of the game, he's a 47% shooter, and it's a 15-point game with three minutes to go. And Buda goes flying in, but is called for the travel as he takes the ball the floor, to the floor with him. And Youngstown State tends to play at a, I wouldn't say a frenetic pace, but certainly an up-tempo style. They might be draining the sands to the hourglass a little bit more with a 15-point lead with three to play. 15 points doesn't seem indicative of the way this game has been played, but make no mistake, Youngstown State has been pretty doggone good tonight. They were shooting 48% at halftime. They're shooting 59% for the game now. Shot clock at four. It's green for three. Green, no, but a foul against counter as Loveless was working for the loose ball. And that will send Loveless to the line where he is a perfect six of six tonight.
Basket is good by Loveless, the free throw at least. And he is a free throw, becoming a fifth Penguin in double figures. And Loveless connects. So give him 10. Quickly Brady. Brady throws it down. Young man in the number one play on Sports Center three weeks ago. He's good for at least one of those a game. And now a foul in the backcourt against IUPUI. In a 15-point game with 2.10 left to go. And as I am reading the league tiebreaker scenarios, it appears that IUPUI, in barring something of the miraculous in this game, as McBride gets his first point of the game, as the 11 seed would go to play at the 6 seed Robert Morris, that Robert Morris owns the tiebreaker with Wright State because Robert Morris has a win against Youngstown State and Wright State does not. Full court pick up by Youngstown just to make IUPUI take some additional time. Penguins looking to run their record all time against IUPUI to 19 and 2. Brady the bucket, he's got six, but again at this point it is largely window dressing in a 15 point game with a minute 50 left to go. Cole Hill, a bobble, a recovery, a drive, no basket, but he is fouled and Dwayne Cohill. Let's hope he is all right. I think just a bit of a rough landing. Cohill pills to be okay. And we've said this that he was kind of slow to the offensive party from a point score tonight, but as the game has gotten late, Cohill has put more of his imprint on this game. I think Jared Callen's going to take a timeout just to kind of give his best player a little more time to recover from that tumble that he took. 30 second timeout called by the Penguins. They have one more asked a berth in the NIT this year. So Cohill to shoot two. Misses the first. One thing of note for Youngstown State, it has been a rather short rotation here in the second half. I think they have played just six since halftime. They're going to have some time off. They're off for five days at this point. They knew that regardless of tonight. They were not playing again until Thursday. And those top five teams have to play once to get to Indianapolis and win. Bottom six teams have to win twice. And the second of those on the road. Brady, a step back three, got it. His first three of the game. Timeout called by IUPUI. 13 point lead for the Penguins with a minute 24 and left to go in the game. So a 30 second timeout. Butler Bulldogs. No fouls being given yet by IUPUI, just defending this one out to the hill. Green on the drive. Green lost the handle. Fight for the loose ball. McBride comes down with it. And we're taking an official's timeout to make sure that Austin is all right. He and Green collided with each other. I think Austin just got hit in the uh, wrong spot. And since Youngstown State was in a position where they really weren't trying to attack with the ball, Austin said, I'm fine. I think a little less than half the population can understand what Chris is going through currently. So Youngstown will inbounds with 8 to the 30 and a minute 11 left to go. 
And Jags are playing it out, not fouling. At least as of yet. They're going to trap. But this one certainly appears to be in the hands of Youngstown State. Cole Hill, a bobble, fouled by Ekbuda. Cole Hill will shoot two. Now the only question that remains is will Youngstown State share the honors in terms of the regular season league championship? Again, if Cleveland State joins them, they'll be co-champs, but Youngstown State will hold the coveted number one seed. Twenty-one for Malik Green, eighteen apiece for Adrian Nelson and Brandon Rush. Cohill sitting on sixteen. Loveless with ten. Missed free throw. Brady rebounds. Coach Calhoun simply saying, "Fellas, don't foul." Counter turns down the twenty-five footer. He'll take the 12-footer instead. That does not go. Austin on the hustle, but he stepped out of bounds. It'll be Youngstown State ball. So the Jaguars will finish their regular season at 5 and 26. Youngstown State at 23 and 8. Jonah Carrasco will come in to give the senior one more chance to play. Chris Austin gets the handshake and hug from Matt Crenshaw. Thanking him for his efforts tonight. McBride. And Jalen Counter wasn't mean to foul there, but once he put the hands on McBride, he understood what had taken place. It looks like Youngstown State's going to have to clear the bench a little bit here. McBride connects. Marlon Taylor will come back in for IUPUI. All three seniors have played extended minutes tonight for IUPUI. Rush taking a seat for Youngstown. McBride makes them both. Now he will exit. Armand Girard is in. Jalen Counter is done for the night. Counter exits with 20 points. DJ Jackson, he's got 13 as of now. And couldn't make that one, but gets the put back. He'll finish with 15. And a timeout taken by IUPUI, and it, it is just to get guys out of the game. They won't huddle. That's just a chance to get, kind of give your seniors a curtain call. He should. For whatever reason, men's basketball has not been an easy proposition at this level for Youngstown State. This is a record-setting season for this group. And they will simply pound the pavement and put this into an end. For a first time in their Division I history, the Penguins of Youngstown State are Horizon League champions. This will be a very happy bus ride back to Youngstown.